So I didn't mention this when I reviewed Hustlers, but two days before that, I went and saw a press screening for the movie I'm about to review now, Ad Astra. And then when I went and saw Hustlers, I saw a trailer for Ad Astra, and it's a very surreal experience sitting in a movie theater watching a trailer for a movie that you already saw. Hey everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson, and as I said before, this is my review for Ad Astra, which stars Brad Pitt, and follows this astronaut who learns that his father is still alive, and that all of these surges that have been happening on Earth, and even the moon bases and on Mars, are being affected by a big experiment that Brad Pitt's father was a part of. So basically, Brad Pitt gears up goes to find his father and try to save the world. So if there's one takeaway from this decade, it's that there are a lot of movies here with A-list actors going to space. We had Gravity with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway, The Martian with Matt Damon, and last year we had First Man with Ryan Gosling, and this is just the latest edition of sending A-list actors into space. And it's a decent movie. I won't say I was disappointed, but it was pretty much the movie I imagined it to be. There's a lot that I like about Ad Astra, and then there's a lot that I didn't like about this movie. But let's start with the positives. Brad Pitt is really good. Between this movie and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he is just delivering great performances all around. Which is funny because when this movie started, I thought Brad Pitt was just kind of dull, boring and flat, but as the movie progresses, you really get a sense of why he starts out as the person he is, and he just gets better throughout the movie, and you really feel for this guy. I won't say a whole lot with the events that happen, but if you were to watch this movie and think to yourself, Brad Pitt's kind of weak, um, just give it time and it'll build up. And then you also have Tommy Lee Jones, who isn't in the movie a whole lot. I mean, his character is like Luke Skywalker in The Force Awakens, where he's not in it a lot, but he's very important to the plot. And he is good. I mean, he's a cranky Tommy Lee Jones, and that's what he's best at at this point. You have Donald Sutherland and Ruth Nega. They're both good. It's a great looking movie as well, and if nothing else, it's one of the few movies out right now that's true sci-fi, where it kind of gives us a real depiction of what if we were advanced enough to head to the moon or the Mars. I know there are other movies out there, but I'm talking about this year right now. And again, it's a good looking movie. It's from the same cinematographer as Interstellar, so... You got that going. And it can be a very intense movie. While this is a much smaller movie, there are a lot of moments here that are very thrilling. They put you on the edge of your seat and just the mixture of the actions that are going on and the sound design really helps with the thrills. Now, unfortunately, I felt like there were a lot of problems with this movie and I don't love it in the slightest. One issue I had was with some parts of the cinematography. There are a lot of parts of this movie, especially in the middle, like with Interstellar, where it just goes on forever. And there are just a few too many shots of just space and not a whole lot happening. And it leads to a very poorly paced movie. I was actually shocked that this movie is just two hours long because it really felt like it was almost two and a half hours, maybe three, just because that middle is so poorly paced. Now I talked about all the actors. One actor I didn't mention in particular was Liv Tyler. And I want to apologize right now to Margaret Robbie in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because she is no longer the most wasted actor in a movie. Liv Tyler literally has no reason to be here. If anything, if you watch the trailer for this movie and then you go watch the actual movie, all of her scenes that are in the trailer are cut out. And when I saw the trailer in front of Hustlers two days after seeing the movie, I was like, wait a minute. What, what the hell? Where are those scenes? Granted, Liv Tyler is not a very good actress to begin with, so I just don't... It's not a huge loss, but at the same time, I feel bad for her considering that, well... I know she got a paycheck, but at the same time, you put that hard work into the movie and you're cut out of the final product. I mean, she's not completely out of the movie, but there's just like a few moments where she actually is on screen and she either never speaks 
or she's speaking on like a phone or something. She really is without a doubt the most wasted actor of any movie this year. And that's about it. I don't really have much else to say about this movie. It had a lot of good moments about it, but there were also a lot of things that I just wasn't too fond of. And ultimately, I guess I like this a tad better than First Man, but not as much as The Martian. I would say it's good, but it's not great. Again, it does have some serious pacing issues, and it's going to make the movie feel a lot longer than it actually is. But what's good about the movie is really good, especially the film's look and Brad Pitt's performance. And there you go. That's my review for Ad Astra. Now I want to know what you guys think about the movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? What is your favorite space movie starring A-list actors that have come out in this decade? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and of course leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page, follow me on social media, and until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.